Anthony Deutsch uh, Reuters. Um, there's been some suggestions that now might be a good time for Ukraine to enter into talks uh, with Russia. Um, winter is coming. There's been they've had some successes on the battlefield. Um, do you agree that this might be a good time to that? And I have one for Mr. Hoekstra. Um, then you've said in the past that um, you thought it might be a good idea to have a tribunal for aggression. You, all three of you, mentioned the brutal aggression of Russia in this conflict. Do you think it would be a good idea to have a special tribunal for specifically aggression in the Netherlands? And if so, how are you um, yeah, trying to create that? Thank you. I think we have to remember what, what this is. This is a war of aggression where uh, uh, Russia, President Putin, has invaded another other country. Um, and uh, by doing that, they have violated international law. Uh, and even though they have lost some territory the last two weeks and months, they still control large parts of Ukraine. Um, Ukraine has stated that they're ready to uh, negotiate, uh, but we also, of course, know that uh, the only way to achieve and acceptable outcome for them uh, is that they have the strength on the battlefield. Most wars end at some stage uh, around the negotiating table, but what happens around that table is uh, fundamentally uh, linked to uh, the situation uh, on the battlefield. So what we should do is to support Ukraine uh, to strengthen their hand so at some stage there can be negotiations where Ukraine uh, prevail as an independent sovereign nation uh, in Europe. It's for Ukraine to decide. It's them to pay. Uh, to, they are paying now the highest price uh, in, in, in terms of lost lives and, uh, and damage to the country. So it's for Ukraine to decide uh, what kind of terms that are acceptable uh, for them. It's for us uh, to support them and uh, maximize the likelihood for uh, an acceptable uh, outcome. And it is, as uh, Minister Olengren and Kaiser said, that if, uh, if uh, um, President uh, Zelensky and Ukrainians stop fighting, then Ukraine will cease to exist as an independent nation. If uh, President Putin and Russia stops fighting, then we will have peace. So Russia can end this war tomorrow. They started the war and they can end the war by uh, stop invading a neighbor. With that, I, I very much agree. Uh, who, is, who, is, who is strong at the battlefield is, is strong at the negotiation table, and that is why you know, making sure we enable Ukraine um, uh, to hold its own uh, basically uh, trumps all other things that we're doing. But you're very right. Uh, there is much more than, than providing military aid that we need to do. Uh, humanitarian aid, sanctions, uh, but also accountability, because we all see, read, and hear about the most horrific things that are going on. And, and therefore, we owe it to the victims, we owe it to their families, uh, we owe it to prosperity that we do make sure that justice is done and justice is being done, even though we know that that is extremely difficult. If you talk to, to people who have seen uh, similar cases, it takes years and years. You typically are only able to convict a few of, uh, of the perpetrators, but still you do need to do it. Uh, we very much support uh, also this effort with, with uh, sending teams, as the Minister of Defence uh, just said. Uh, we will continue to do so. And um, we are open and pragmatic in how to make sure that justice is being done. So we're in full support uh, of the ICC. Uh, we also see that the crime of aggression uh, should be put to trial as well. Uh, so we're open to exploring what further can be, do, be done. What we do have to acknowledge, though, is that every single time you set up a new legal vehicle, um, you do run into um, uh, quite a, comp a set of complicated issues because that does need to be acknowledged. Uh, but our fundamental position is justice needs to be done, uh, and, and, and it is secondary how we achieve that. Now, only to say that... Um Looking at the situation in the battlefield, um, uh, of course, uh, Ukrainians are, Ukrainians are in a much better place than they were when the war started. Uh, and that uh, underlines the point uh, that both Jens and Bobke made. Uh, if you have a strong position on the battlefield, in the end, that will make you stronger at the negotiating table. Uh, and at the same time, it's very difficult to see that now that the whole Russian strategy has failed, um, what possible purpose is being served by more uh, losses of lives every day on both sides. 
um, uh, and uh, at some point, uh, with, with winter coming, uh, that must lead to the inevitable conclusion uh, that Russia has to stop fighting this war. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. There's a question here in the front. Uh, Dutch News, uh, NOS. Uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, as you said, uh, negotiations, uh, negotiations aren't an option right now. Um, and given the fact that the war might still continue for quite a long time, are European NATO allies, and perhaps specifically the Netherlands, doing enough at this point if we want to continue to support Ukraine on the long term, as it might be taking? And what more could be, do, could be done by the Netherlands or European NATO allies? I think we have to recognize that NATO allies, the Netherlands and others, have uh, provided Ukraine with unprecedented support. President Putin uh, made several big strategic mistakes when he invaded Ukraine. One was to underestimate the Ukrainians, the courage, the bravery of the Ukrainian armed forces, the political leadership, the Ukrainian people. But the other big mistake he made was to underestimate uh, uh, NATO allies, partners, in our uh, commitment to support uh, Ukraine. And uh, we have supported Ukraine uh, uh, now for several months, and there is a clear message uh, from NATO allies that we will continue to provide support to Ukraine. I welcome the new announcements from the Netherlands, um, showing that uh, allies are ready to continue uh, to provide military support, uh, economic support, humanitarian support, and also to continue to impose sanctions uh, on, uh, on Russia. So President Putin not only underestimated uh, the Ukrainians, but he also underestimated uh, NATO allies, uh, Netherlands and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and um, partners. Uh, I also would like to commend the European Union for uh, the sanctions, the support, uh, the, uh, the, uh, everything they do uh, to, uh, to help and support the Ukrainians. Based on what we see, we see actually that there is a continued strong also public support across Europe and North America for uh, uh, continue to provide uh, support to Ukraine. Um, that was also, I think, the message from the uh, elections in the United States, the midterm elections, that uh, uh, we have strong bipartisan uh, support in the United States uh, for uh, uh, continue to provide support to Ukraine for as long as it takes. So. Uh, um, the message is, yes, uh, we uh, will support and we will also, of course, uh, uh, constantly assess what types of weapons we are providing to Ukraine. Thank you, Secretary. General. There are two questions and there is not much time. First question here. Volkskrant. Then you are uh, Arnoud Brouwers with the Volkskrant. Uh, my question is to all of you. Um, uh, one of uh, Mr. Putin's uh, uh, strategies appears to be to uh, uh, create a second wave of refugees uh, fleeing to Europe uh, by um, uh, bombing all the civilian infrastructure that he can uh, reach in Ukraine. Um, are you preparing, uh, since, since support from the West is very important for uh, uh, Ukraine to, to uh, keep its defenses up, are you preparing uh, here for such an eventuality, is my first question. And second, are you preparing um, us, uh, the people who live here, uh, for uh, what may be in store this winter, uh, since uh, uh, public support from uh, our country seems to be one of the pillars on which Ukrainian defense also rests. Yeah, maybe, as a... uh, maybe I can start and sure, you sure. take over. Um, I think, well, uh, you state that one of the goals uh, is to create more uh, refugees from, from Ukraine into uh, to the rest of Europe. Uh, I think the, the goal, if there is a goal, is to demoralize the Ukrainians. Uh, and I think we can see now that that's not going to succeed, whatever happens. The morale is very high on the Ukrainian side. Uh, and I think in general, as we all three stated, that uh, Putin has not achieved any of his goals uh, thus far, is that he's achieving quite the opposite uh, goal. Um, we are seeing uh, Sweden and Finland entering NATO. Uh, we are seeing more unity in the NATO and also within the EU than ever before. And actually, Ukraine has friends and allies uh, that you almost cannot count, and the friends and allies of Russia, you can count on one hand. So, uh, yes, there is a sort of a tactic of, 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 the, of the scorched earth, if you, if you want. 
uh, by, uh, by targeting the critical infrastructure, electricity, water, etc., targeting the Ukrainian people directly. But it's not going to break the morale. Uh, I'm sure of that. No, I very much agree uh, with what the defense minister said. And, and uh, it, it, this might happen. Uh, but if there's one thing that we have seen also in uh, the first wave after February 24th, is the tremendous support uh, from governments all across Europe uh, and beyond, by the way, and our citizens uh, to help out and, and to harbor those uh, basically flying from within, uh, fleeing from within our region from, from one place to, to the next. Uh, and that is something I think we, uh, we should sustain. There is, however, one thing that, of course, we, we do see. We do see that Putin is, uh, uh, is weaponizing food, uh, particularly vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Global South. He is weaponizing energy also against us. So the one thing we need to do, in, in my view, as governments in, in Europe and North America and across the globe, is make sure that on the one hand we will continue to support our war effort. And on the other hand, we do provide our own citizens, citizens with a shield to make sure that you know, they can sustain their lives, they can pay the energy bill. Uh, they are able to, 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 to do their, their, their shopping, uh, because as long as we uh, maintain their position, I'm sure we can also maintain the broad support that, that we see all across the streets here in the Netherlands and beyond. Let me just say that, first of all, I agree with what Kajsan Wopke just uh, said. I can add one more point, and that is that uh, I'm confident and sure that certain that, uh, that NATO allies and partners uh, will continue to support Ukraine, uh, not only because we stand in solidarity with Ukraine, but also because it is in our own interest to ensure that uh, President Putin doesn't win in Ukraine. Uh, that will be a catastrophe uh, for the Ukrainians, but it will also make the world more dangerous. We will become more vulnerable, because then the lesson learned uh, from uh, the war in Ukraine for President uh, Putin, but also for other authoritarian leaders, is that when they violate international law, when they invade another country and when they use brutal uh, force, they achieve what they want. And that will make us all, all more vulnerable. And that's the reason why it's in our interest, our security interest, uh, to uh, provide support to Ukraine. Yes, we pay a price. Uh, uh, higher energy bills, uh, higher inflation, uh, the economic costs of providing support. Uh, but the price we'll pay if we don't succeed if, 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 if President Putin wins, will be much higher because then we'll live in a more dangerous uh, world. Thank you, Secretary General. Last question here in the second row. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stoltenberg, Mr. Hoekstra, uh, just to be clear, um, uh, following up the questions on the uh, war goals of the Ukraine, it's fully clear that Ukraine is completely dependent on, on Western aid for military success at the moment. So it's a relevant question, I think, um, what is for the West, for NATO or for the Dutch government, an exec acceptable outcome of this war? Uh, if, you, if you're saying it's okay to, for Ukraine to reconquer the territories that were lost, does it also include the Krim and also uh, Donbass? Or would you say that that is too much because that will risk uh, destabilizing Russia in a, in a broader sense? Thank you. It is for Ukraine to decide what is an acceptable uh, uh, resolution of this conflict. Uh, we will not sit here and decide that on behalf of them. Nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. Uh, and again, uh, we have all uh, made it clear again and again that we uh, support Ukraine's right to uh, self-defense. We have to understand that, that what, what Ukraine does is to defend their own country against a war aggression. And, and NATO, NATO allies, uh, we are not part to the conflict, but we support Ukraine in the right for self-defense. And the right for self-defense is a right enshrined in the UN Charter. Uh, and we will not sit in Brussels or in any other NATO capital and decide what is acceptable. What we will do is to maximize the likelihood for Ukrainians to achieve an acceptable resolution around a negotiating table. And the way we do that is to strengthen their hand on the battlefield. That's what we do. I couldn't agree more. Um, if, if this whole, at the moment that this, 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 this whole horrible war is over, one thing needs to be crystal clear to the Kremlin and to all dictators and would-be dictators across the globe. 
and that is that you know there is no room for for this type of imperialism in the 21st century and that is our aim uh, it, our aim is to help uh, the brave ukrainians that are fighting for their own country but is also making sure that you know our whole continent uh, stays safe and we do make sure that this uh, lesson that this notion clearly resonates uh, across the globe so we will continue to support them uh, and let's not let's not be naive this will not be over in in my view in the next few weeks or months this this might well go on uh, for the foreseeable future and we will continue to sustain them uh, because there is there is and there will be a lot at stake that is worth helping them for so we will do so uh, no, I agree completely. And the, the last thing we heard when, after the last illegal annexation was that Kherson was to be Russian forever. Uh, uh, and now it's back in Ukrainian hands. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see uh, how the war goes, but it's up for Ukraine to decide uh, on when it uh, could accept uh, an end of the war and when not. And, and as long as it takes, we will be there to support them. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for attending.